Oh, actually, let me do this. Unplug that. Actually, put you guys on right here. Hold on, we still haven't gone live on Facebook. We're just getting off the phone with uh, Monday. Oh wow, this is this is dark here. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Okay, going live there. All right, guess have to have some sort of daylight as well. I don't know why this angle is so, like, it's not that great lighting. Alright, we gotta do something there. Yeah, you guys still can't see me properly. This is going to have to do. <laughs> All right, welcome back uh, to the podcast. Uh, Money was actually supposed to come back today, but he, uh, he he's not feeling well right now, so I am taking over again. Uh, well, not taking over because, you know, it's both of our, you know, show, but it would be just me for today once again. Uh, so, yeah, it'll be just me. Money should be back tomorrow. Uh, he should be back tomorrow. He just he was supposed to come back today, like I mentioned, but he's just not feeling well right now. Uh, so yeah, and uh, he he wanted to come, but uh, I I told him he should he should take it off. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it'll be just me today, and yeah, we we got a lot of football to get into, and unfortunately, I have to talk about this. My Steelers. Um, you know, I'm kind of lucky that Mundeep isn't here because he would have been torching me already. So, are you impressed by the Browns or depressed by the Steelers? Uh, I'm depressed by the Steelers because they had, I had such high expectations for them coming into this game. I didn't think we would lose to the Browns and that's no offense to the Browns because I know Baker Mayfield has been coming out and playing very well at closing closing to the end of the season uh you know they finished 11 and 5 which is a pretty decent record and uh they beat them in the final week of the season and I just thought you know even though like it was their secondary I thought okay that's fine when Ben comes back and their whole you know team comes back we're gonna beat them in the playoffs and that did not happen I feel like if that first snap didn't happen, it would have been a completely different ball game. Completely different ball game. And I think it would have been a lot closer and the Steelers would have had a bigger chance to win. I think that is when the momentum shifted for the uh, Browns and the Steelers just had no momentum going into the next and you know future offensive uh, offensive plays. The play calling, you know, Mike Tomlin's a great coach, you know. Uh, you guys know how how much I'm for African American coaches in the NFL, NBA. Um, but he's an amazing coach. But the play calling last night was not there. It was just not there. Uh, I'm not gonna blame this fully on Ben Roethlisberger, but even though the he passed for 500 yards, the four interceptions still was still was a key factor. Uh, and also they should have went for that on fourth and one. Because if they went for it, I think they would have gotten the first down and they could have got a touchdown on that drive and it would have been a more closer game. And then the Browns scored on the next uh, drive. So it, w it was sad. It was, it was, I was very upset. Uh, even going into this morning, I was upset. Now I'm still upset because uh, I had such high expectations for the Steelers. But this goes to the point that I was trying to make. It's... The Steelers, sometimes when they have too much confidence, and I'm getting more into this just now, 
they um or when there's pressure applied on Ben Roethlisberger rather he chokes and it pains me to say that as a Steelers fan but everybody knows it's true when there's pressure on Ben Roethlisberger he does not show up and um on the topic of this Juju Smith-Schuster I like the kid I like him as a player I like him as a person you know he's he's a really good kid but to go out, you you only play the wide receiver position. You don't, you know, you're not on, you're barely on special teams. You're, you don't play defense. You don't do, you don't do any of that. You're, you're only on the field as a wide receiver. So nobody gave you the right to because football is a team sport. If this were boxing, MMA, or whatever, golf, then I wouldn't have a problem with this. But he went out and spoke on behalf of his team saying the Browns is the Browns. Now that is where um, he was in the wrong. He was definitely in the wrong. I get it. You're divisional rivals. But to go out, go out and speak for the team when you're rarely on special teams. You don't play defense. You just play the wide receiver position. You have no right in doing that and going out and talking about uh, you know another team now that puts your team under more pressure and you're they're like okay now bro we got to win and that's not what happened and you Juju Smith got clowned after the game you know doing his Corvette Corvette dance so uh and you know as much as you know I was I'm mad about it because people were clowning the Steelers he Juju Smith deserved it I, I hate to say it but to go out and talk the amount of trash that you did uh, on behalf of our team, it was uh, disappointing. And the way you play it, I get it. You rushed for over 100 yards, and you had a pretty good game. But uh, to go out and speak on behalf of the team was uh, inexcusable. So I can't, it was, I mean, obviously I laughed at first when I heard it, but it's, it wasn't the right thing to do. Because now the Browns are moving on, and you're not. You're going home, and now the Browns are going to Kansas City. So... Uh, I'm more depressed by the Steelers than I am impressed by the Browns. Um, so Lamar Jackson uh, finally won his first playoff game after going 0-2 in the postseason. Now, did Lamar Jackson silence his critics? I will say he did for the most part because obviously I'm one of the critics that says he's not an accurate thrower of the football. But the main critic was that Lamar Jackson can't win a playoff game. Excuse me. That he can't win a playoff game. But he proved to everybody that he can win a playoff game. He beat a good team. It was a big game for Lamar Jackson. And I mentioned that the weekend before the podcast. Or the last podcast before the wild card rounds. I mentioned that this was a big game. And a lot of pressure is on Lamar Jackson to win this. Because if you go 0-3 in the postseason... People are going to look at you and be like, okay, this is just another guy who plays good in the regular season and chokes in the playoffs. And Lamar Jackson has heard that criticism. He's heard of all of it. And he wanted to prove to everybody that he can win a playoff game. And so he did that, right? So I think that, you know, they can they can move on from the second round. But this is a big game. Beating Derrick Henry, I mentioned it on my Instagram story that, uh, Lamar Jackson had a fantastic game, especially that uh, you know touchdown run that he had. Well, he had a couple of them, but that one touchdown run, everybody knows what I'm talking about. That was amazing. Uh, and then uh, you know, Derrick Henry on the other end was completely shut down by the Ravens defense, completely shut down, and Ryan Tannehill was nowhere to be found. Uh, and I thought Derrick Henry was going to be the story of that game. That's what I mentioned also last week. I mentioned that I think Derrick Henry is going to be the story of this game and that the Titans are going to win. Even though I was rooting for Lamar Jackson, that's why I'm not too bad that I, too mad that I uh, got this prediction wrong. Because I was actually rooting for Lamar Jackson. I just didn't think it would happen. I'm happy for the guy that he got his first playoff win. And I think he did silence a lot of the critics. Obviously, there's still that you know one critic uh, critics out there that he can't throw the football, which is true. He still needs to prove that to us. That he can throw it efficiently on the level of like you know Patrick Mahomes, and that's why you know we can't really put him on that level, Patrick Mahomes, because you know he's an elite runner of the fo football with as the at the quarterback position, but he can't really throw it as well as you know these Patrick Mahomes guys, and you know Deshaun Watson even. So 
Uh, yeah, it's. I'm happy for Lamar Jackson though. I'm very happy for Lamar Jackson for sure. Uh, so yes, he did silence majority of his critics. Uh, so the Tampa Bay Bucks beat the Washington Football Team like almost everybody predicted. But the question is, are you worried about the Bucks? Uh, I am worried actually. This is my pick to go to the Super Bowl, and uh, the based on the way they played, this game was too close for too long. Um, I get it, they won by double digits, but it wasn't like that the whole game. This, I understand that I said last week that the Washington football team has a chance because of the front four, but I didn't mention anything about their offense. The backup quarterback for the Washington football team was nearly torching the defense of the Tampa Bay Bucks. I think that, you know, teams like Green Bay, the New Orleans Saints, I think Tampa Bay can beat teams like that. But not with like the defense they played last night. If they play defense like that, it's over. They're, they're not going anywhere. Because the Washington football team, who I say countless times, don't even have a name. That's how bad they are. They squeezed into the playoffs. We all expected them to lose. But we all expected it to be a massive blowout. Not the way that the Tampa Bay Bucks won. Like I mentioned, this game was too close for too long. Until Tom Brady and that offense you know, stepped it up in the final minutes. But uh, I am worried about the Bucks. That defense is very, very worrying. That they can play good defense. The Tampa Bay Bucks have a good defensive line, but they just didn't play that good of defense um, last night. And they're lucky that the Washington Football Team is not a good team. And that's why that that's why they won. If that was a more decent team, you know, maybe like the New Orleans Saints who they're facing this round, then um, that that they would have lost that game. But the Tampa Bay Bucks defense was just not there last night. And they should have won by a lot more than what they did. So, um, I am very worried about the Tampa Bay Bucks, my Super Bowl pick. Because if they continue to play defense like that, they are not going to go anywhere. And like, like Money likes to say, Money likes to say it, defense wins championships and he doesn't lie. Defense does win championships. We saw the Rams beat the Seahawks, and Money was a big fan of the Rams because of their defense. That he said consistently that you know I think that the Rams are going to beat the Seahawks because of their defense. They have a top defense in the NFL, and he was right. So, um, the Tampa Bay Bucks defense needs to improve uh, a lot, and they have a good defensive line, like I mentioned. They do have a good defensive line, so. Um, if they can play good defense against the New Orleans Saints, they will beat the New Orleans Saints. Same thing against the Green Bay Packers. You know, Aaron Rodgers is one of my favorite players, but I think Tampa Bay, like I mentioned, can go to the Super Bowl. They're my pick to go to the Super Bowl. So I think that if they can play good defense, not like how they played last night, because if they play defense like how they played last night, then um, they're not going anywhere. They're getting bounced out by the New Orleans Saints. So, yeah, that, that's final. They're, they're not going anywhere if they play defense like that. Um, okay, so next question. So, speaking of uh, the Seahawks and the Rams, um, did the Seahawks make a mistake prioritizing Russell Wilson over defense? And another thing, um, like Monday mentions, that defense wins championships. I already talked about the Steelers, by the way. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say that they made a huge mistake, but they did make a little mistake because prioritizing your offense over your defense, we saw it, like I just mentioned, with the Tampa Bay Bucks. If that was a higher level team, like the Saints or the Packers or something like that, or even like a team like uh, Indy or the Colts, then the Bucks would have lost that game. And... Uh, Money Money says it all the time. I'm gonna keep saying it because Money is a. This is his favorite saying: "Defense wins championships." So, to prioritize Russell Wilson, I'm not saying because I thought the Seahawks were gonna win this game, because I thought the combination of you know Russell Wilson, Tyler Lock, and DK Metcalf, who's a stud by the way, uh, I thought that that would be enough to beat the Rams defense. Even though you know Aaron Donald, those boys on the defensive end for the Rams are really good, but. I think that, uh, 
this this was a mistake just prioritizing your offense over your defense because your defense got torched by Jared Goff uh lot uh in the wild card game. It was terrible. It was terrible because I got my prediction wrong. My sister's a Seahawks fan. I know a lot of other Seahawks fans and I know they they were mad. A lot of Seahawks fans were mad. I was mad. I'm not even a Seahawks fan. I was mad because my Steelers lost. But uh, they, their defense needs to improve. And that is something that we have been talking about all season. The Seahawks defense. They could Don't blame it on Russell Wilson. Because the Rams have good defense. It was the Seahawks that don't have good defense. And that's why they lost this game. It's because Jared Goff took advantage of that Seahawks defense. They started to improve that defensive end like closer to the end of the season. I'm like, okay, this team can actually go far. This team is a bigger Super Bowl contender than the Rams. But come playoff time now, their defense collapses again. And then the Rams completely take advantage of that. Because when the Rams offense gets going, their defense is there. The defense is the best part of the Rams. So, um, yeah, the, it's, they, they need to step up on that defensive end for the Seahawks. Because just prioritizing your offense, yeah, it's going to score you points. It's going to score you a lot of points. But you can't if you can't play defense, because you got to play defense in the game. You have to. <laughs> so if you can't play defense, you're going to get points scored on you. And, you know, not a lot of times are your offense going to have good games. So, and that's what we saw last night uh, against the Rams. So, or not last night. But that's what we saw against the Rams. So, um, they need to step up during the offseason on that defensive end. Their offensive line is fine. Like I mentioned, Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf are studs, and we know where Russell Wilson can do. He's a top MVP candidate. Uh, but they need to step up on the defensive end. Um, okay, so my team plays again today. I hope this team doesn't disappoint me. Uh, Alabama versus Ohio State. Now, Monday picked Ohio State to win this game, which actually shocked me because I don't know another single person that's picking Ohio State to win this game. Uh, who wins this game? My prediction is Alabama wins this game by far. By far. Even if their um, one receiver doesn't play, I think Alabama still has too many weapons for uh, Ohio State. The Alabama's team has pretty much all first-rounders. That is how stacked this team is. So if one play, per, player doesn't play, then it doesn't matter because they're still an elite team. That's how crazy this team is. Ohio State, I'm not taking anything away from them. Justin Fields is a stud. He's going to be a top two, top three pick in the draft next year. And people are, are talking about him. He's going to be picked over Trevor Lawrence. And it's hard to argue that. That is very debatable. No pun intended. But... um. I think that Alabama's going to win this game by far. I was looking forward to Alabama versus Clemson. That would have been a more competitive game. You know, Trevor Lawrence and them going against Alabama. All first rounders, in my opinion. Because this this Alabama team is an all-around team on the defensive end and on the offensive end. So, I don't see how Ohio State can put, possibly beat this team. I just don't see it. I think Alabama wins this by far. Not even going to be a close game. I think, you know, it's the biggest game of the year. But I don't think this is going to be a close game at all. I think Alabama is just going to completely blow them out of the water. And they, they win, win it all this year. And I will be very happy. You know, that might make up for, you know, my Steelers loss last night. Um, So... The Bills won uh, their first round game. So can Josh Allen lead the Bills to the Super Bowl? Uh, I'm going to say no respectfully. Because I say no. I Like I get it. Stephon Diggs was in my top five MVP candidates. And he is a stud as well. Stephon Diggs can play. Like he is no joke. Josh Allen is no joke either. So um, when you combine those two. Th those are two good players. But... Um, you got other you got other teams as well. You got teams like I don't know the Chiefs, maybe. Uh, so you got you got competition there, and I just don't I just don't see it happening uh, for the Bills this year. Maybe in a couple of years coming, but this year I just don't see it happening. 
I I get it. These guys are studs. These guys can play. Their defense is pretty decent, and we know what their offense can do. I keep mentioning that Josh Allen is becoming an elite quarterback in the National Football League, and Stephon Diggs is already an elite wide receiver, right? Even though, you know, this guy can do everything. This guy can do it all, right? The only question is, can he play defense, right? That's how much of a stud that Stephon Diggs is. So, but I'm not going to go as far as to say that they, that they can win the Super Bowl, um, because this is a tough task because a team like the Chiefs, who I have winning it all, we all have the Chiefs winning it all because in all seriousness, at the end of the day, the Chiefs have the best team in the National Football League and it's they probably are going to win it all again. I wouldn't be surprised. Nobody would be surprised. But um, the Bills, I just don't see them having enough this year to go all the way, I especially because they play in, you know, um, the AFC, if they were playing in the NFC, then I would be like, okay, maybe they have a slight chance, but you still have, you know, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, um, Aaron Rodgers, these boys. So it's still tough either way. So I'm not going to say that the Bills can go all the way this year, uh, because it's just the amount of competition. Yes. And they, they still need a couple more years. Josh Allen still needs a couple more years. Same with Stefan Diggs. So I'm not gonna say that they can go all the way this year. Um, and I'm not gonna say Josh Allen can lead them to the Super Bowl because he's still young. Uh, so how should the Steelers feel about their quarterback? <sighs> they should feel bad. They should feel bad about their quarterback position right now because we still don't know if Ben Roethlisberger is gonna retire. He he might he very much probably will retire. Uh, maybe not this season, but very very soon. So and uh, they need to they need to have a backup plan because right now Mason Park is not he as the backup quarterback for the Steelers. He's not a starter. With all due respect to him, he's not a starter. So they need to find something now. Maybe Sam Darnold or. Um, Sam Darnold or somebody. I don't want Cam Newton because Cam Newton, I, I, you know, he's getting older. I, th I think his time in the league is coming close to an end, and he can't really throw the football. But you need someone else here in Pittsburgh to really rally this team and get a. You know, I'm not saying Ben Roethlisberger is not a leader, and he definitely is. He's a veteran in this league. He's just not the same Big Ben that we know and love from a few years ago. Because I've mentioned this countless times, he cannot brush off defenders like he used to. He cannot run the football that well. He can't. He never was able to run the football that well. He's always been a you know an elite uh, thrower of the football. But the reason we have never put Ben Roethlisberger on the level of Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, these guys, is because of what we saw last night. He does not show up when you need it, when you need him the most. He does not show up. I get it. He threw for 500 yards. He had 500 yards of offense himself. And, you know, he had Juju Smith-Schuster, you know, for like about 100-plus yards. I get it. But they still lost the game. They lost the game. And that is exactly what I count. I said countless times about Ben Roethlisberger, that he does not show up when he really needs it. That's why I was more scared of them going 16-0 and because I was like, okay, if they go 16-0, and they'll be ahead of themselves, especially Juju Smith-Schuster, who was already ahead of himself at, you know, 12-4. and So th I think that's another reason that they lost this game. They were too confident. Ben Roethlisberger is not that type of guy, but the other guys on this squad uh, are too overconfident. But we're talking about the quarterback position. Ben Roethlisberger time in the league is coming close to an end. The guy's 38 years old. I don't see him playing like how Tom Brady's playing right now. I don't see him playing 43, 44, 45 years old. I don't see him playing that long. I think he has a year at maximum two years left in the league. We're th we're like we're seeing if he's going to retire this year because he just might retire. He has nothing else left to do. Um and I don't think this that he can lead this team to the Super Bowl anymore. And he, you know, he has two Super Bowl championships. That should be good enough because with the way this team is looking, it does not look like they will win a Super Bowl because Ben Roethlisberger is not getting younger as we see it. He's just getting older. And I think that they need to figure something out with Ben Roethlisberger. I would love for to see him retire in Steelers jersey. I'm not saying get rid of him. Keep him while he's there, but have a backup plan. Maybe sign a backup quarterback, you know, 
if Ben decides to retire this year, I think go after Sam Darnold because right now where he is is not going to be suitable for him. But I think pairing him up with Juju Smith Schuster, Deontay Johnson, these boys, I think that will, and you know, Chase Claypool, all these guys, I think that'll be, you know, a good, you know, mix of young guys. I think that'll be a good young squad. And they need a running back. They need a running game. Like, just something to ha help their running game. Mike Tomlin's goal going into this season was have a strong running game and have a strong running defense. You don't have either of those. And that is a problem. And especially when you're going up against, you know, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, uh, like they did last night, they got torched. Kareem Hunt, Hunt and Nick Chubb completely torched that Steelers defense. And that is a problem. And we saw that it was a problem. You know, every time the Steelers had to will themselves back into the game, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt took over. It wasn't Baker Mayfield. And even though Baker Mayfield did his part, it was Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt who completely torched that defense because they know they have played the Steelers multiple times. They know for the past three years, they have not have a good running defense, and that is inexcusable. It is completely inexcusable, and it's unacceptable. So... They need to figure something out there on the defensive end, on the rushing defense, and uh, on the you know on the rushing attack because both of those are not good right now. So uh, they need to figure something out there. But you got to see what your quarterback is doing. Have a talk with Ben Roethlisberger if he's going to leave or if he's going to stay for a year or two more because, like I mentioned just now, I think his time in the league is almost over. And it sucks to say that, but the guy's getting older. It's going to happen one day, and I don't see him winning another Super Bowl. It, unless, you know, he just comes out of the blue with another MVP candidate season, which I don't see happening. Um, So Deshaun Watson um, has made it clear that he's not happy in Houston. So how should Deshaun Watson feel about Houston right now? Um, Houston, we have a problem. Uh, Deshaun Watson should want to leave. Deshaun Watson should want to get out of Houston. Now, I would love for him to come to the Steelers, but I just don't think we have the assets for Tino you know, to trade for him. So, he needs to go somewhere where he will be appreciated because, right, he, he was mainly angry at the fact and not one that they traded his best friend, brother, and teammate, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Well, not literally blood brother, but, you know, he was like a brother to him and DeAndre Hopkins and even... Like, he's an all-world receiver. I don't know why you would trade him without letting Deshaun Watson know, right? And um, two, you hired a, a GM that, and you didn't let Deshaun Watson know. So those are two things. TJ Watt, who's a, you know, he's a great guy. Great guy, you know, great player. He might leave too because of what this franchise is doing. This franchise is is going down. That's why I started the statement off with Houston, we have a problem. You know, not only is it a popular quote, it's true because Houston has a problem right now that your quarterback does not want to be there anymore. TJ Watt might not want to be there anymore. So this is a huge problem. So if Deshaun Watson wants to leave now, let him go because you haven't been treating him like the star quarterback that he is. Deshaun Watson behind Patrick Mahomes is... A quarterback that can lead a franchise to a Super Bowl. This That's how good Deshaun Watson is. And not a lot of people believe that because he plays for the Houston Texans that don't have DeAndre Hopkins anymore. We saw that last year in the playoffs that Deshaun Watson is an all-around quarterback. And, you know, he's an all-world quarterback. We saw that. But since DeAndre Hopkins left, people are like, oh, Deshaun Watson fell off. No, the Houston Texans fell off. That's who fell off. Deshaun Watson did not fall off because he is making the best out of what he has in Houston, which is not a lot. And that's just how good Deshaun Watson is. Imagine surrounding himself, surrounding him with, you know, good weapons and, you know, decent guys that can, you know, catch, run the football. Deshaun Watson would be dangerous. He can take that team to the Super Bowl. So... He needs to go somewhere where he will not only, one, be appreciated, but two, have a possible chance at the Super Bowl. I'm not sure where. Um, maybe somewhere that has a you know quarterback problem. I'm not going to say New England because they don't even have the weapons either. Um, even though he would be a better passer than, you know, Cam Newton because Cam Newton's never been a, you know, elite thrower of the football. But 
uh, not New England. You got to go somewhere that, you know, they need a quarterback to, you know, be successful, be more successful. Go to a team that, you know, if they get a good quarterback, an all-world quarterback, they will be a Super Bowl contender. Now, I can't really think of, st- you know, maybe even the Rams. If the Rams can trade for, um, or the 49ers even, the 49ers can trade for him as well. Um, the Rams, I think they can trade a couple of guys as well. I think adding Deshaun Watson to the Rams will be extremely dangerous So, uh, for the league. But um, final statement, um, Deshaun Watson should want out of Houston, period. Um, so last question of the day, I know it's uh, shorter again. Uh, sorry about that. It's just, you know, money's not here, so it's not that long. But... Uh, final question: What's at stake in the Tom Brady versus Drew Brees matchup? Um, what's at stake? It's there's more at stake for Tom Brady, I I would say, um, because you can't lose three games in a row in the same season to this team, because last time you were you at home field, you were playing in Tampa Bay, and uh, you got stomped. You completely got stomped on by Drew Brees, and then you got swept in the season series. If you lose this game again to Drew Brees, we're going to have serious questions. Now, I mentioned earlier in the podcast that this Bucks defense needs to be better, and that I'm not taking that away. They need to be better. But Tom Brady needs to show up because you have a guy like Antonio Brown who is getting momentum now because I think he debuted against the Saints and he was just getting in the rhythm of that offense. And, you know, now he's really in that rhythm. And, you know, when you add Antonio Brown, Mike Evans, Ronald Jones, Leonard Fournette, all these guys, you know, Rob Gronkowski, who I didn't even mention, (laughs) that was the fifth guy that I mentioned, all those weapons, you need to beat the Saints, especially, you know, if you know if you tied the season series and then you lost this game, okay, that would be fine. But you lost two in a row. You cannot lose three in a row to this team because they will have there will be serious problems. There will be problems in Tampa Bay, not only Houston. Um, you need to beat the Saints, and I think they will beat the Saints because I don't see Tom Brady losing three in a row to Drew Brees. I think he needs to prove that. Um, he's still an elite quarterback, and I think he will prove that against the New Orleans Saints. So, uh, I got Tampa Bay winning this game, but there's more at stake for Tom Brady. Uh, so yeah, uh, I need to take a sip of water. Alright, uh, so, that's actually gonna wrap it up for today. Uh, that's all the questions we have. If you guys have have any more questions, um... I'll answer them on the podcast, you know, especially when money was not here, but he should be back tomorrow. He should be. Um, yeah, I know, all football today, but, you know, it's playoff season. We got to talk about football, even though there is some stuff going on in the NBA. Um, you know, games getting postponed and stuff. We might talk about that tomorrow. Uh, so, anyway, thank you for everybody who tuned in today. We'll be back here. Uh, hopefully, we, uh, when, if money comes back, I hope you will. He, uh, he should be back, like I said. So we'll see. I'll see you guys here tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern. Um, yeah, st- be just be here. <laughs> All right. This might go up on my YouTube channel because it's uh, shorter. Anyway, see you guys tomorrow. I'm out.